the cheer for the cowboys. Uh, when the Indians went on the warpath, we used to throw our empty cans at the screen. We never saw, I never saw myself up on the screen when we watched the cowboys and Indians. And that's only recently changed for me. When, we, when I heard my language spoken on in a Walt Disney film. And I was always excited whenever I saw a real native person on TV, because I knew in the Cowboys and Indians movies it was generally Italians or you know people that had a native look that played uh, native, that played Indian. And so with this film, we wanted to look at uh, and delve into why these representations were on the screen. And so there has been quite a few uh, eye-opening revelations for me, especially uh, with the silent era. There was so much participation of Native people in the filmmaking there.
but it's also you need that understanding, especially when we, we work with uh, camera people. They might not understand the language. And so they miss the cue. Like if somebody's talking about whatever's in their hand, they don't they don't they won't understand it, you know, they won't understand to just tilt the camera down just a bit, you know, just to capture whatever they're talking about. And so there's those little misunderstandings that happen. You know, it's not as blatant uh, as years before, but now it's kind of subtle. And so, and so we're working on that, you know, and so I'm happy with the progress we're making. And then I see many young people that are coming up, that have grown up, and you know, when uh, the Aboriginal People's Television Network started, they used to run our TV show on there. Like they used to do a news magazine show. And so our kids, you know, like, and we live in Montreal. And so our kids, you know, when our show came on, hey, come on, let's go, daddy's on TV. And then by the third or fourth time, they were like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and so I'm happy that they're able to take that for granted, that our people are on TV and that they're able to take that for granted. And so, and that's a building block for us. And so I'm very hopeful in what's coming up in these young people. David? Mm -hmm. here. My name is David Hernandez Colmar. I'm Wayu from the Wayu Nation. I uh, live in Venezuela. We are in both countries, Venezuela and Colombia. Um, First in the morning, we had this radio program, you know, and we were speaking English, Spanish, well, speaking Spanish, but speaking English. Um, and we were discussing about, you know, whether, you know, the tool of media was was or not. You know? And we were sharing, you know, some information that has been passed through, you know, all the discussions we're having in the communities. Like, um, the enemy is not the tool. Not even just strategy, but the discourse that you know is in this in, in the embedded speech that is being you know like disseminated through the media. In that case, um, we are also talking about the connection with the nature, with the Mother Earth, and in our continent, especially in Latin America, we are still you know having this um, like this. Um, format of documentary making, you know, there's always a struggle, there's always, you know, a need of to report quickly, you know, what's going on, whether it's a protest or whether it's a demonstration, that's what is going on there. But at the same time, you know, um, this um, film which is, we were just watching, you know, it reminded me of my people because at the very end, you know, we have a lot of smiles, you know, a lot of laughter to show the worst of people. Um, we come from a very, very tough country, just, you know, the way you, uh, my land, you know, in the side of Colombia, we have the largest open coal, open coal, uh, largest open pit coal mining in the world. In the Venezuelan side, we have about 70% of the oil that comes from our state too. So we have all this diversity you know, in terms of you know what what uh, we have to report in terms of what we feel in both societies. And the other hand, uh, also we think uh, that uh, one of the of the things that make us to keep on working on communication is um, when you realize that you still have hope when a young person. Yes, you know that not everything is meant to be sold or bought. And, um, and the responsibility of the colonization of emancipation, you know, is up to everyone. It's not only for elders or for younger, but for everyone. For indigenous and indigenous peoples, because um, <coughs> we live in, in one planet, in one place. And sometimes we lose our discussion by trying to define to what is Indian cinema or what is to be an indigenous person. Um, for me, to be an indigenous person, it just, you know, the definition is very close to what is 
being stated in the United Nations like the um, Japanese person is related to some each land in the language I you know. No matter I mean it doesn't have anything to go with the color of your skin or you know, or the color of your hair. And then we always have um, concerns about what it, uh, what has been, you know, normalized or uh, you know internalized in terms of you know what is being what 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 are what is the side that we have to choose, you know? Maybe the white, you know, Western God or the, the Indian who is being killed. And even though, you know, sometimes we, we say, well, you know, you don't have to to go to camera to that community because there's there's no need for that, because they need water or they need food. And that very moment we say, you know, um, they're, they're, you have to see the things, you know, from the very different side. Because no matter if the person has the ability to read or not, but the person already, you know, identifies the logo of Coca-Cola or Pepsi, so this person has already, you know, comes some something. So and we have to forget about these lens that, you know, we have in other, when, when, we, when we are going to see ourselves as communities, or we say, well, I'm going to be a community by forgetting that you are already a community, you know. Um, so, I get to tell you about one film that uh, was made in the Sierra de Perija, which is the beginning of the Andes. And um, that's where we learned about audience, how important is an audience of what is what it means to be an audience. So there, there are three parts of the film. The very creation of it, you know, the post-production, and here's going to get you sick. So why, why would you call a genius movie to a movie who, you know, that not most of that no indigenous peoples are going to get you sick? So you have to also think about that, you know, as a critic. Um, in this movie, um, The Root of Our Systems, it was edited um, with a community. I mean, there was an assembly of a hundred people. There were a nine, there were nine cuts. At every nine, ninth cut, cut um, the community felt really like, well, this is us. You know, we feel well interpreted in this cut. So that was the movie that, you know, uh, later on just came out just like, like a film. So my mother, when saw this movie, she said, well, I really like the movie. And I said, why, mom? And she said, that movie just like me. And I couldn't, you know, like explain furthermore what, you know, those words meant. But she felt interpreted in that movie. So part of the, of the idea, you know, what, what film, uh, represents or not, has to be all, I mean, I think he, it has to include um, the person who is given the voice, because the people has, has been always having the voice. So, um, this is kind of uh, the things you know, we're discussing out there, and uh, please free, uh, feel free to ask you know, more questions, you know, because we have a short time. I'm afraid to give the chance to uh, I'm happy to be here and honored to be part of this uh, panel. Uh, it makes me think of what my grandpa said. I went to school for so long and finally ended up with my PhD, but he said it took me so long. He said I must be a slow learner. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here among uh, these uh, filmmakers and other uh, scholars. I, my name is Craig Howe, and I, uh, I'm the director of a research center called Center for American Indian Research and Native Studies. Uh, and it's uh, within the boundaries of our reservation, the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. And uh, the main thing that interests me and what our research center is about is this idea of promoting the perpetuation of American Indian communities. And in the United States, that is a specific meaning. It's not indigenous and it's not Indian. And it ties to what John Trudell was saying and also Joseph Fuente uh, in, in a, a film we just watched. Uh, the importance of, or the, 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 
the harm that that thinking does, Indian, indigenous, native, the harm that is, if we're going to perpetuate, in the United States again I'm talking, if we're going to perpetuate tribal communities, we have to perpetuate those entities called tribes. And that is what everything is about. And it, it, when we don't do that, we're undermining that. The end game of, of, of indigeneity, of, of uh, Indians, is the, the um, obliteration of tribal communities, the abrogation of tribal uh, treaties, and the dissolving of tribal uh, reservations. So that's what we try to do uh, through the Center for American Indian Research and Native Studies, and that's this idea of tribalism. I can see why they put this table split here because this guy is an Ojibwa, and we're <laughs> Lakota. We don't want to with him. But uh, I mean, it's still, I think, in a modern world, we can uh, 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 overcome those type of. of uh, Relationships in the past. No, no, no. So again, I really appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. What? One more. One more. <laughs> anyway, I'm just going. So essentially, what I just said was, he speaks Dakota, but I'm going to start in Ojibwe. So I need to just make one way, Mr. Harry, to win the easel win. In Doda Machijak. So my name is Ryan Comfort. I'm from the uh, Kiwi Bay Band of Lake Superior Ojibwe. But um, I'm down here at UNC. I'm a graduate student at the uh, School of Journalism and Mass Communication. And I'm studying uh, indigenous self representation in, uh, in new media, essentially, and focusing on um, producing media that reflects um, indigenous ideas. And so one of the big questions that I always have or that, that I think about when we talk about films and representations, like what does an indigenous, what is an indigenous story? Um, you know, we, we see things like the native car, like there's a race car and everything, because, you know, we are joking earlier with my uh, friends, my friend of me here, Craig, uh, <laughs> <laughs> earlier today about, you know, how he drove down here, and it's just an indigenous to drive ever. So, like, is, is, is that what makes an indigenous film? Is that what makes an indigenous film? There's a deeper thing. I think that's part of what we're talking about today. Um, one of the things that came up was this idea of how Indians fit into a Greek tragedy, right? We're so steeped in this idea of storytelling that's based in a Western ideology, right? It's based in this idea of like a three-act play. Well, where I'm coming from, you know, it's four acts. There's always four acts in something. It's like, <coughs> there's nothing that ends, right? And so how would that affect a film? How would that affect a documentary? Um, you know, if we go back to those very, those ontological foundations of our cultures and our communities, you know, how does that change our film? How does that change our stories? Um, and so it's just something that, that's always kind of in the back of my head. If I could do anything, right, then how will I frame a story? How will I create a story that really reflects that, that kind of deep culture, the way we frame things, the way we think about things, and the way we move through the world? Um, so yeah, just a little less, like, like thinking. <laughs>
in this moment in time. And I'm at this moment where I was talking to Ryan um, the other day in a class of mine, and uh, you know, I'm at this moment where I have all of this amazing footage, and you know, I'm doing the things that I need to do um, to keep my job with you know, the writing and all of this stuff. Um, but you know, I'm at this moment where I'm now looking at all this footage and being like, okay, now I have to make something with all of this. So um, you know, it's, it's always exciting and um, thrilling and nerve-wracking to be in, in that moment in time. But the other thing you know, that brings me to this table that fascinates me to always be in conversation um, with visual artists and to think about this is that in one of my most frustrating tasks in life currently, I would say, is teaching American Indian Studies. I really, really struggle. Um, to do this, and you know, I'm always trying to pick other people's brains about how you do this to non-Indians. You know, I was really lucky, and I got to teach at Evergreen State College in their uh, Masters of uh, Public Administration, Tribal Administrations program, and it was all of these Native people, or people that had worked for um, American Indian nations in the area for 20 years, and so, you know, we got to have these, you know, great academic conversations about sovereignty and what it meant locally, and you know, those sorts of things, and that was amazing. Um, you know, but now I teach, a, you know, I teach classes, and I have people who. I won't name any names, but we have a senior um, at Duke who had never heard of Geronimo, did not know that Geronimo was a person, thought that it was just a, you know, a verb, Geronimo. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's a whole different world, right, in terms of thinking about, okay, so how do you take the knowledge, and you know, sometimes it's actually worse what, the, what, what students do know, or think that they know about American Indians, right? So how do you take all of these stereotypes, all of this baggage, you know, that real India does a good job taking apart where this comes from, you know, how do you really take that apart slowly? And I think, you know, as Craig said, the most important thing to me and the thing that I'm always pushing over and over and over again with my students is that um, American Indians, I mean, once again, talking about the continental the United States, are fundamentally polities, and we have to go back to thinking about them fundamentally as polities and get away from these insistences that there are these cultural isolates or these racial isolates and talk about them as polities. And it's a struggle um, to get students to understand that. And what I really wish is that there were more films out there um, that dealt with this, more films that really took on this issue of um, American Indians as polities, because my students um, have absolutely no sense of that whatsoever. And you know, I think really pushing this stuff, pushing these ideas, um, because so much of what the disappearance of indigenous populations has been about is denying our political structures, denying in fact that we're polities. Because you know, if we're cultural groups or racial groups, we're harmless. We can't challenge the settlement of the United States. But if we're political groups, that's really fundamentally challenging. Um, so that's my project and, and my hope um, that either I will be able to make such a film or that I will inspire others to be able to make such a film because I think that that's you know, one of the things that's really needed. Yo prefiero hablar en español. Mi inglés no es muy bueno. I don't know if you Primero que nada quiero uh, agradecer al corazón del cielo, al corazón de la tierra que me deja tener este momento para compartir con estos hermanos y con ustedes también. I'm oh, grateful just to the heart of the sky and heart of uh, the earth to be able to be here and sharing uh, this time with you and some and my brothers here at the table. So kind of do it like that, okay? Watch this film and thank you to Ernest and Catherine for doing it and, and bring this issue of Native American representation of, or Native representation to the fore. Y hablando un poco de mi participación en, en este festival, eh, yo represento ahora un poco a la cultura maya. Yo viví con los mayas algunos años y, y en unas pequeñas comunidades. And with respect to my participation, my participation in this festival, I'm working with uh, Maya communities for uh, the last several years, and I've been working with them, and I, I'm right now uh, a spokesperson for some of them. The message that my that movie is bringing uh, is going to be screened uh, Sunday at 3 p.m. Uh, the title is Susut Kansa, uh, the return of, uh, of knowledge, or the return of a learning process. 
de cambios tan violentos y tan rápidos. I think that in, in, in the time we live uh, of, of very rapid changes, violent uh, many times. Es urgente buscar las raíces para que la sociedad esté más balanceada. Uh, it's urgent to find uh, the roots in order to balance uh, uh, what is going on. Y bueno, eh, en este país, en todo, los mayas dicen, eh, si tienes dos manos, tienes dos ojos, dos orejas, una boca, y caminas, eres humano. And, and the Maya said, said that if you have two hands and two uh, eyes and two uh, feet and you walk, you are human. It doesn't matter what you are. In realidad, todos somos habitantes de una isla que flota en el cosmos. You, we inhabit an island that is floating in the cosmos. That's what they say. Y es un, después del 21 de diciembre del 2012, comienza una nueva era donde hermanos con luz van a venir a empezar a traer otro tipo de mensajes. And after the closing of the third thing back to tomb in uh, uh, December 21st, 2012, uh, a new year, a new year in which brothers and sisters uh, that are, are under the light are bringing a new message. It's the, very, the, the emergency of, of a new year. Y solamente eh, pedir que el corazón de ustedes lata igual que el corazón de la tierra y que todos seamos hermanos. And uh, the messages of uh, what I bring is, uh, is uh, uh, I want to share with you uh, that we have to try to synchronize our hearts with the heart of the earth in order to be more equal, more like brothers and sisters as we should be. Okay, the, the floor is open. We can go in there. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Do you have any questions? Uh, Something that I want to say before we begin is also, um, like at least uh, the movie ended on a sort of, uh, sort of a happy end, right? Saying how we are living a good moment in which we are seeing a lot of uh, <coughs> film filmmakers representing themselves. But at the same time, it seems to me also that Hollywood is reconfiguring its agenda, right? Uh, creating blockbusters like Apocalypto by Matt Gibson or Avatar 2012. Right, movies that are sort of recycling all the stereotypes, and uh, so any thoughts about, you know, so what's what's the role? So it's, on the on the one on the one hand, is that struggle against Hollywood still uh, the struggle against Hollywood still going on, right? But at the same time, it is also a new challenge that it seems to me that we face that we're getting to know each other uh, as indigenous nations, because it seems to me that I, I mean, there are a lot of our experiences that are coming to light with all these films. Uh, and uh, there's still a lot of stuff that we need to know about each other as well. So how do you see that challenge, or both challenges? You forgot Johnny Depp. <laughs> 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 um, just a quick thought on the Johnny Depp thing. Uh, there was a lot of um, hate for Johnny Depp but I don't, I don't have any for him. He's just an actor. He got hired to play a role. And for me, when I watched that, we went out to watch that film, and for me, I was watching him play Indian, as opposed to, say, if they had a Native person on, I would have been watching them play the character of Tonto. So for me, I was watching Johnny Depp play an Indian. He was he was pretending to be an Indian. But uh, ever since our film came out, um, it's been sent to um, the agents, um, you know, the real Indian, and they sent it to the agencies or something? Oh yeah, the Screen Actors Guild. So um, they sent this uh, film to the Screen Actors Guild and to let these filmmakers know, you know that Native people, they don't have to just play Native people. They can play a doctor, they can play a, a cop, they can play whatever. They don't, they don't have to just play an Indian person. They can, like uh, Adam Beach, you know, he was on that cop show. He was playing a cop who happens to be a Native person. 
And so I think that's where Hollywood should start going. And there are probably, you know, there's pretty, maybe little steps that are going in that direction as well. My favorite movie, by the way. Maurice is going to talk about Apocalypse because he was there. <laughs> Don't show up the Maya Riviera. Representa un pueblo idiotizado que no comprende un eclipse cuando los mayas tienen calendarios muy precisos. Casi, bueno, la NASA tiene un reloj atómico y la diferencia entre el calendario de Solkin es mínima. Con un calendario que se hizo hace más de 3500 años, pero todavía hay cargadores del tiempo que lo siguen. Yeah, it's, it's a very stereotypical of, of depiction of, 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 of indigenous peoples. So if just one example, their, their Maya calendar is as, as precise as it could be. Uh, the, the atomic calendar that, that NASA runs, uh, uh, in comparison with the uh, Maya calendar, they have a little you know, difference. And, and these people have been doing it for 3,000 years already, and there is still uh, people in, in the Mayas uh, across Metro America that are still counting time uh, to keep it uh, current. Y cuando, cuando, cuando cuentan el tiempo, no solamente es eh, en la calidad del proceso, sino ellos saben que nuestras vidas están involucradas en círculos más grandes de existencias. And of course, time is not as we understand it uh, as counting uh, linearly, but it's a series of rings in which life uh, is, is just one part of it. Our present is affecting other realities that are uh, in those uh, frames. Entonces, all no the nada la de and of course, <laughs> that is just a movie. <laughs> So um, we just had two weeks ago a um, like a film festival, you know, in Colombia. Uh, 